This is a 74-year-old female uh, presented with a repeated dyspnea for one year. This patient has uh, quite a lot of comorbidity, including uh, essential hypertension, type 2 diabetes. Uh, five years ago, the patient suffered a heart check and treated with standing in LED and a diagonal with a two-stand technique. Okay, this patient this time was a farm, uh, heart failure and the ankle cardiography issue is a typical uh, severe aortic stent notice with a bicuspid valve. STS score calculated is up to uh, 80%. So it's a quite high risk patient for surgery valve replacement. So decision was made to perform TAVI procedure after discuss with uh, uh, this patient and his uh, uh, family. You can see this is a baseline uh, TT echo. It's a typical severe aortic stenosis. And also, actually, you can see there is a severe calcification uh, due to the bicuspid valve. And also, you can notice um, maybe from TE not so clearly. You can see it's a uh, uh, right and the left cuspid fusion with a calcified uh, carina. Actually, you can see uh, from, from, from the four chamber and three chamber view, you can see the high speed velocity uh, across the aortic valve. And also the LV vacuity is quite small and uh, uh, there is a no aortic regurgitation. So actually this is a baseline CT analysis. Uh, I'm not sure uh, the cut slap is large enough. There is a low risk of uh, coronary obstruction. So this is a coronary high, both the left and the right corner is high enough, more than uh, 50 millimeter. You can see there is a very eccentric, uh, very eccentric calcification. For the non cut slap, actually the leaflet was a motive, uh, a minimal, a minimal calcification for the left side because uh, it's a, a typical a BAV case, uh, left and the right cusper pad was fusion with a calcified uh, 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 terrain. You can see there is a lot of uh, uh, calcium. Actually, this patient's TTE imaging is quite suboptimal because of the patient uh, have got the uh, right side pulmonary ectomy. So the heart was pushed into the uh, right side of the uh, thoracic. Go on. So, uh, but in TE, we can definitely uh, say this, uh, this patient is a bascuspid aortic valve and uh, the uh, open area or orientation is about seven to nine o'clock. I think this is the uh, um, most difficult type of the bicuspid valve to do the TAVI uh, because the uh, uh, open uh, area line is horizontal. So actually we can see there is a heavily uh, calcified uh, roughly uh, in the anterior side of the um, aortic valve. This means the fusion of the anti uh, right and the left uh, cuspids. So I'm quite worried about the uh, cal calcification because um, it is very uh, indicated the PVR. This means um, peak uh, uh, perivalvular leak. Uh, 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 after the TAV, TAVI procedure. So um, let's Very move nice to time. the uh, long axis view. Uh, actually, the bicuspid aortic valve is quite calcification and the movement is quite restrictive. And uh, there is no aortic valve regurgitation. So the uh, left ventricular uh, cavity is quite small. So I think uh, the, it is indicated the high demand for this procedure. So if there is PVL or uh, severe aortic valve rectation during the procedure, the heavily uh, hypertrophy small airway maybe cannot tolerate. So um, the annular diameter uh, use the 3D uh, maneuver we calculated is about uh, 68 millimeters. Yeah, actually, it's a uh, very rare condition. I think because uh, the aortic valve is a severe aortic stenosis and uh, also very eccentric. So, and also the non cuslap leaflet is quite high. So it's a uh, high speed velocity. Uh, uh, make me very difficult to control precise towards the very small orifice. So the only way we can try the first, I try the AR1 and uh, try two wire. One is a, a, a 
a hydrophilic wire, another is a coiled wire. Then I considering it's uh, the a little dilated L2 root and uh, the a little horizontal. So my colleague, Dr. Nguyen, uh, suggests me to change the, uh, another guiding cassette uh, uh, and plus left one. Finally, you can see with the right, uh, I think the right uh, cassette and then make uh, the tip uh, two ways uh, precisely to uh, toward uh, the, the very small orifice of the aortic valve with successfully uh, cross valve with a uh, uh, straight wire. Now I think the next step uh, we will use a uh, pigtail to exchange the wire. Yeah, yeah. I try to insert my pigtail into the apex. Oh, uh, yeah, here is not uh, in the apex. No, I think uh, it is in the apex. What do you think? So at this time, I think uh, echo uh, image is quite important. He guidance uh, the wire position. Yes, we we, we can see it is yeah. the is it, it is already in the apex. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's. Uh, uh, every cavity is very, very small. <laughs> yeah, you can see from the hemodynamic, uh, you can see it's a. Uh, we have shaped the wire tip with a small curve, uh, uh, considering the small RV dimension. For this particular case, we definitely were dilated uh, because uh, it's a very essential uh, classified uh, arena and uh, severe without any regurgitation. So I will uh, do the balloon dilation with uh, 18 millimeter balloon before I uh, insert the tabby. So at this time, I have uh, already set up the valve. And also we will do the hydration for this patient. This one. Oh, very eccentric. You see? Yeah. OK. Stop facing. We have to do the uh, balloon dilation. And you can see due to the uh, very eccentric uh, gasified uh, arena, the balloon there is, during balloon dilation there is a waste. So now the, the hemodynamic is go up uh, to 80 millimeter mercury. So Dr. Sanjian, can you introduce uh, the <laughs> echo information after BAV? Well, actually, it is a quite a successful BAV, but I think the the, the valves of the the leaflets of the valve is quite thickening and quite calcified, and it's very hard to open. Yeah, and also you can see after BAV, the gradient was decreased. Yeah, the valve. Okay, now next step we will advance the self-expand valve. Uh, according to the CT analysis, so designed to make uh, use a uh, 23 uh, tonus valve. It's a third generation self expanded domestic valve. And uh, maybe I need to change a new wire. Yeah. No, it's okay, bro. Yeah. So you now I change a new wire and then shape the wire tip, considering very small RV dimension. Now we insert the valve system. Give you a full the wire tip position is good, Dr. Tangchen. Yes, it looks good. Yeah. Okay. Now we insert the valve. Okay, we successfully cross the valve, and we will go to the I.O. portal view. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, I think it's good. It's okay. Let's release the valve. Why is it good? Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so you did. Oh, here's something. So, so you did. So you did. Bam. Okay, good. Up, uh, pacing, 100. Mm -hmm. One more cash. Okay, good. So I will do the high implantation. Okay, let's stop. Fine. Good, okay. 120, continue, release the valve. Looks good. Oh, yeah. Okay, too this high? Not good. too high, yeah. From echo. Okay, good. Uh, 
je sais pas. Et puis là, c'est un nouveau là. Ok. Je l'ai enchaîné, il va être ça. Très bien. Ah, ça y est. Très bien. Ok, good, Felicia. Good. Yes. Good. Release. Stop pepsin. So we release a vow to the recapture point. Uh, okay, let's take a picture. Awesome. Which I can. Go to the another view. How about the position? The position is looks okay. It is zero position, zero high. Okay. <clears throat> Can you uh, pull out a little your okay. problem? Okay, good. Let's take a picture. I think the position is good. So we decided to deploy it. So still go to the IO code. Very, very essential, you can see, due to the very gasified uh, arena. Okay. Okay, now I ask my assistant or my colleague to pull back uh, the wire, release attention. And the uh, uh, pacing, 114, the position is good? Yes. What's the dips? Zero dips. I think uh, the valve was not fully opened. Due to yes. very eccentric and the severe gasified uh, arena. I will do the post dilation. Sure. Which size? I still use uh, uh, 18 balloon. 18 balloon, okay. So I will do the post dilation with the 18 balloon. Yeah, the quest of Puma. Hydration. Let's take a picture. Uh, is there any PVR? I think there is some regurgitation. Is there central regurgitation or PVR? Uh, from echo, it is central regurgitation. Okay. And it looks no PVR. The central regurgitation because of the Y may be pressed. The okay. Why bias? Valve, yeah. Sure, sure. I think the, the, the valve position is quite good and, uh, and not so very expanded. So I do the post dilation. Valve position, the valve function is looks good. Uh, okay, um, uh, 118. And then no PVR. And it is very good result for this patient. Okay, seems better. Yeah, now after post dilation, mm -hmm. it seems better. Yeah. Okay, stop pacing. Oh, sorry. We have a t shirt. I think now the shape of the valve is good there. Yes. Uh, the position after post dilation is not changed. The valve Definitely. is stable, Definitely. and uh, the valve movement uh, is improved a lot. And the the shape uh, from the short axis is improved a lot and quite wrong. Okay. We can see the corruption line of the of the three leafless. Yes, cross on. Okay, can you calculate the velocity okay. in the main grid for this case? Go to the transgastric. Very essential calcium nodule, uh, calcium it's carina. Three. So I will use a smaller balloon. Mercury. I think yeah. uh, it's it is balloon is so safe mercury. for post dilation. Yeah, avoid uh, the aortic root injury. Another risk, of course, uh, there, there will be some risk for uh, embolization, especially for the brain. So, so far is no data, routine use uh, uh, a brain protection device. So no. Prof, okay. Go ahead. The prof, actually from echo, it is That's a perfect good. result. And the, the valve is in the very suitable position. The function is normal. And the most importantly, there's almost no PVR for this patient. Okay, good. Yeah, so very perfect. A little central rectation. I think when you remove the wire, it is where emission. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah. 
So actually, this is a, a aortic root angiogram after first dilation. This looks good. Yeah. And go to the AIO. You can see from the IO to AIO, actually, you can see it's a still an eccentric valve deployment. So, so but, but uh, considering from the echo uh, information, Dr. Sanjay introduced uh, the velocity only 1.4, there is no gradient uh, from the thermodynamic. I will not uh, do the post dilation with the big size balloon, considering there is a risk of the aortic root injury. Yeah, I agree. I think it's good, good position. Very, very minor regurgitation. And also the coronary is also very patent. Okay, very excellent result. Uh, actually, uh, according to data, there is a 40% of cases after heavy procedure where occur LBBB. And uh, among these uh, left amount of patient, I think 60% were, were, were recovered. So for this case, I think uh, we do a high implantation. So I'm not worried. For this case, I will continue to monitor. So I think for this case, uh, uh, RBB where maybe where uh, maybe it will be temporary, where disappear. If not disappear permanent, so I will after go go home. This patient was discharged. Uh, is discharged. I will routinely call back at three six months after the procedure to do the echo and the uh, uh, ECG and the monitor to see is there any uh, high degree uh, high degree AV block. Also, we all know for the RBBB, uh, it's an independent predictor of the uh, heart failure and the ocosmo death after in after TAVI procedure. So if this patient uh, at one year follow up still RBBB and also QR, interval more than 150 uh, uh, milliseconds and also with uh, RV dysfunction. So for, as this scenario, we were considered according to our protocol, our cast lab we were considered for this patient to uh, to perform the uh, left, uh, left bundle uh, branch uh, zoom pacing to make uh, uh, re recover the RV synchronization to recover the RV function. Because for PCR procedure is more than uh, 10 years uh, uh, syncoplality, antiblood therapy enough. For TAVI, uh, they consider this patient without any atrial fibrillation, so still follow the uh, guideline regulation. So aspirin uh, 100 uh, per day, uh, lifelong. Okay, thank you. Okay. So I think, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, so I, we were close, so we completed the, the TAVI case. So this is uh, elderly uh, females uh, presented with uh, heart failure and uh, with a high risk for uh, uh, surgery. So the decision was made to perform a TAVI procedure according to the CT analysis. So this case, uh, there is a two point. Uh, one point, uh, I think, uh, it's a, a typical uh, BAV case with the right and the left uh, cusp overlapping with a very eccentric, uh, high degree uh, uh, KLC cranial. So for this case, uh, uh, when we uh, cross a valve, there is uh, some difficulty. But, uh, fortunately, we successfully uh, cross a valve with a straight wire. Then for this case, uh, I always think we should do the uh, BAV uh, predilation because a very severe calcification where severe care. Uh, stenosis. So for the uh, valve implantation, I think uh, for this case, uh, uh, I would like to choose a self-expanding valve uh, in, in terms of a safety concern, yeah, because very essential calcium. So after valve deployment, according to the valve ship, and also from the echo information, uh, the valve is undeployed. So we do the uh, one high. 80 millimeter balloon post dilation uh, successfully, and uh, the final result shows the uh, uh, gradient was go go down to zero, and uh, the peak of, uh, velocity was only 1.4. And uh, there is a minor station PVR, and also there is uh, no uh, corner obstruction. So this is our case. So thank you very much.